I am Takilambat Mibol Singh, lecturer in geography. I am teaching geography in class 11 and 12 stand. Today, let us discuss a new topic, human development. The term development refers to change in better quality. It is a qualitative change or value addition change or value added change. Human development, therefore, refers to the change in the quality of our human population. The term human development was first time coined or developed or spelled out by two great economists of Asia. One belonged to Pakistan, another belonged to Asia. The first scholar or economist who put forward the idea or the concept of human development was Dr. Mahabub al haq of Pakistan. The second economist was Dr. Amit Sen. Both of them were Nobel Prize laureates. Before starting the actual meaning of human development, according to this to renowned scholar or economist, let me say something about the main aspects of our development or the term development. The term development has three important aspects. The first one is change in the quality of life of the people. Second aspect, opportunities that people have. The third aspect, freedom that people enjoy. Therefore, human development is the development or change based on quality of our population. According to Dr. Mahabub Baal Haq of Pakistan, development refers to enlarging people's choice, leading to live a long and healthy life with dignity. According to this economist, development is people-oriented process. In other words, People are central to all development process. According to this economist of Pakistan, the main objective of development is to create the condition in which people live or can live a meaningful life. A meaningful life is not just a long one, but it is a life with some purposes. It has the following aspects. That means a meaningful life has following aspects. The first one, healthy one. The second, able to develop their talent. The third one, free to achieve their goal. The fourth one, participating in social activities. Again, according to Dr. Amit Sen of India, human development refers to increasing freedom. Here we mean the freedom, economic freedom. From the diverse of land of these two renowned economists, we can conclude the main aspects of human development. The first one is that living a long and healthy life. The second point, having enough knowledge, enough means to gain knowledge. The third one is having enough means to live and decent living. This is what the main concept of human development is developed, is postulated by the two economists of Asia. Then next come to the measurement of human developments. Before starting the actual process of measuring human development, uh, it is better to study the important preconditions or pillars or prerequisites of human development. There are certain conditions that we need to achieve 
human development. The first one is equity. The term equity means equal access to opportunities available in the country to all, irrespective of their gender, caste, color, creed, and income. It means that if you want to achieve the question of human development in a country or of the world as a whole or a part of it, we need to access, we need to distribute the facilities or resources available in the country to all peoples, irrespective of their caste, gender, color, income. But in most, most cases, poor and economically backward peoples are failed to access such available opportunities. Therefore, it hampered the development of human populations. The second precondition for human development is sustainability. The term sustainability refers to continuation, continued continuation of the opportunities available in the country up to future generation. It means that future generation should not deprive of those opportunities available today. If the available opportunities are not extended up to future generation, the future generation have no chance of developing human population or human development. The third condition for achieving, for having human development is productivity. Here the term productivity we mean human labor productivity. As you know that our population or our people are the real asset of the nation. Therefore, the working capability of the people needs to increase in order to achieve human development. This increase in working capability or efficiency of the people can be achieved only when we have a good opportunities or that is the facilities for education and health. The fourth condition for having for, or for achieving human development is empowerment. Here empowerment means that is power to make choice. Yeah, it, is, it, it comes from increasing capability of the people in the field of economy and health. These are the important conditions which are considered also as a pillar uh, in the textbook prescribed by the Council for the Student of Class 12. These four conditions are collectively known as the pillars of human development. Next come to the measurement of human development. As you know that the level or the status of human development is not the same. But we can measure the human development in terms of a new concept what we call human development index. The term human development index was first time devised by Dr. Mahabub al haq of Pakistan in 1990. Yes, actually it is a composite figure or index. So constructed based on the performance or achievements of the people in three key areas of health, education and income. That it is clear that the measurement of human development of the world population or a part of it under study is made possible only when we can assess in these three key areas of health, education and income. It is known that health condition of the people all over the world is not same. Some peoples are very healthy. The health condition of other peoples uh, are not good. The variation in the health status of the people shows that the level of human development is also is highly different. The health status of the people or the performance of the people or population on their health parameter can be measured by some health indicators, say fertility, mortality, and life expectancy. The fertility, mortality has a inverse relationship to that of the levels of human development. I mean, the human development level or status is inversely related to the rate of fertility and mortality. In a particular 
community or particular country, if the fertility rate and the mortality rate are very, very high, the health condition of that community or at that people is very, very low. Therefore, there is an inverse relationship between human levels of human development and the rate of fertility and mortality. The last health indicators of our human development is life expectancy or the longevity of life. There is a positive relationship between levels of human development and the longevity of life. Higher the longevity of life or greater the longevity of life, higher the levels of human development. But in, in the same way, there are certain that social indicators that can use to measure the educational status of the people. They are adult literacy rate, the first one, gross enrollment ratio, and the number of school dropouts. If the adult literacy rate is very, very high in a particular society, there is human development. If the number of school dropouts increase in the country or in any state or in any area under study, there is the less human development. In the same way, the number of students who are getting enrolled in the school has positive relation to that of human development. If the number of student, students who are enrollment in the school is very high, yes, there is a higher levels of human development. Uh, lastly, we have to analyze or let me discuss the third indicators or the third parameters for measuring human development is income. As you know that income indicates the income of the people or the income of the country or the state indicates processing power of the people of the country of the state. If the people, if the income level of the people increase, the purchasing power of the people also increase. It's just people are getting uh, or, or people are enjoying yes, more economic freedom. Human development can attain in any society only when people enjoy more economic freedom. These are the important, that is the point or parameters that we use to measures human development of the world of India uh, even in our state also based on the value of human development index so constructed or so calculated we can bring or we can categorize the, the all countries of the world under three important heads the first group of countries having high human development. The second group of countries that is medium human development. The third group of countries that is low human development. There is a great variation or there is a great differentiation between these three groups of countries so recognized so often based on the value of ISDI uh, in respect of their economy in respect of their social structure regarding those countries having high human development index value. The index value of this country is ranging between 0.8 and above. In these countries, education and health are given top priority. In that country also, there is a good governance. Let me explain in Manipur also. High riba human development index belu wang balai bak sing sida education amasung haksel da kwai digi hena miyeng changi apaba makal gi sarkar lai gani sarkar sing aduna kaido ge haiba taraga di high riba social sector sing maruena health and education da investment haiba di chading yam na tauraga praza sing gi nunga yai pano ba purok na bagi da makta yam kan na hone Hari Balai Bak Singh se ngal ngay matam da prithibi punamaku joy to bangam ba adum ba sati lay Balai Bak Singh se ne aduga anisubada the second group of countries that is medium 
Human Development Index. These countries have developed or emerged after World War II. They have more people-oriented policies and reducing social discrimination. These countries are also having political instability. For these countries, the Human Development Index value is ranging between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. The last categories of countries, that is low Human Development Index. These countries are having political turmoil and social instability in the form of civil war, famine, and incidents of diseases. Most of the peoples of these countries are not getting such a privilege or advantages or facilities on education and health. There is an urgent need to address for the requirement of human development in these countries through better policies and planning. These are the important points that we need to make a comparative study of different countries of the world based on the value of ISTI. From the ongoing discussion, uh, it is clear that human development index value is not same. In other words, the level of human development uh, is not same among all countries in the world because of difference in different aspects of our economy, social and political arena. Last one, regarding the study of human development all over the world, there are certain approaches so far developed by different economies all over the world. Actually, there are four approaches that we commonly use to study human development at different countries in the world. The first one is income approach. As a matter of fact, as you know that income indicates the purchasing power of the people. If the income level of the people increases, the people will have higher purchasing power. Higher purchasing power of the people means people are able to enjoy more economic freedom. Only then we can achieve the question of human development. Therefore, it is very important to study the income level of the people all over the world or a part of it under study so that we can understand the levels of human development in that particular country. The next approach, that is welfare approach. Welfare approach is not that according to this approach, human beings are the real beneficiaries of the development processes. It means that people should not participate in the development process, but they should have get the benefit of development. According to welfare approach, the, therefore, the main, it is the main concern of the government to bring or to make the well-being of the people. The government has to make heavy expenditure on social sectors so that it can make the well-being of the people, so that it can, uh, people of that country uh, can achieve the welfare or the well-being. Therefore, people are recipient, not yes, the, yes, it, that is the creator of that human development. Human development is to be created by the government of that country. It is the main responsibility of the government uh, to bring the welfare or the human development according to this welfare approach. The third approach is, is that is basic need approach. According to this approach, there are six basic needs of the people. They are the first, that is health, education, food, water, sanitation, and house. The basic need approach reveals that human development can attain or can achieve in any country of the world only when people of that particular country can fulfill these six basic needs. Otherwise, there is no human development. The last approach is capability approach. The capability approach was designed or was devised by Dr. Amitra Sen of India. According to this approach or according to this renowned economist, human development can achieve 
only when we build human capability on the area of health, education, and income. Yeah, here we close for today. Next time, I will take a new chapter or new topic. Thank you.